Hi, I'm Nicola Bone, Principal of the Natural Smile Dental Practice in Bristol. Today we're going to be looking at just fairly simple biodentine replacement on quite a large cavity. It's an MOL, it's an amalgam replacement, purely because we've got secondary caries there. And we've got quite a lot of internal destruction as well as it potentially being pretty close to the pulp. So for either of those reasons, I'm going to be wanting to look at biodentine in there. And my aim when placing the biodentine is to really try and think about where the dentine is in that cavity, where it would naturally be the natural morphology, and really try and create that when I'm placing it in the first place. Once the material is set, we've then got some scope to do some alteration, but I want to keep that fairly minimal. So that's always the aim at the outset, is to try and keep it in that shaping, create that shaping, keep it away from the enamel margins, so that once we've done that little bit of adjustment, once it's set, we're really ready to go with the, the restoration, which in this case is going to be a, um, a ceramic white filling restoration. So I hope you find it interesting and useful, and hope you enjoy it. So use an incredibly fine burr and we're just going to be putting a little channel around the amalgam and looking at this we'll probably need to cut, put one cut through it and then hopefully lift it out in chunks. But uh, yeah, it's well cut. Right, we'll see how we go. There we go. Okay, so that's divided into chunks and we get that, that coming out into separate pieces now. Okay, so we've cleaned the amalgam out of there and the worst of the debris. We've removed the rubber dam now and I'm just going to just start shaping that cavity but as minimally as I possibly can. We want to just clear out the margins and I'll just take it down to something that's sound. Okay, so we'll get going with that. So we're pretty close to the pulp, but no, no no particular near exposures, but uh, yeah, this is where the Byzantine really just comes into its own with giving us a really good base. Start laying down some secondary dentine there. Pretty much ready to go there. We've got some nice clean margins. I always want to see the margins really clear, and I'll be keeping the Byzantine clear of that so we can get a really good etch around around the margins. Okay, all right, I'm ready for the biodentine, please. So now we're going to mix the biodentine. We take it out of its pack, give it a little tap, unscrew the cap. We then add the drops. So it's five drops and it's a continuous squeeze not releasing between drops. We place one drop on the slab, recap the biodentine, place it in the mixer, and then we set the mixer going for 30 seconds. Once mixed, we remove from the mixer, unscrew the cap, and then place the biodentine on the pad. At a distance away from the liquid, already placed so we don't get any mix together. We tap down the biodentine to get a nice creamy consistency. At this stage, we then would hand to the dentist after setting a timer for 15 minutes. 
So at this point, I would be using my favourite instrument for this, which is a PF49, a plastic. Um, and initially, I'm just wanting to check the consistency, making sure I'm happy with that. That's really nice and creamy. That's pretty, pretty ideal as far as I'm concerned. Separate a small amount out and I should be able to pick, pick it up with that. Then get some nice. I want it to, um, I, I've started rolling it because that's a really nice to get a nice smooth edge is really that's how I like to place it in the cavity and at that point it's ready to go we've got a little bit of flow to it but it's not dripping but we've got some good firm consistency so at that point for me that's ready to go what I, what I will have used the water for and you'll see me using shortly is using a little bit of a little brush in there I'll brush over the cavity and just get it very slightly wet using that same liquid and I don't want it pooling We'll try and show you this on the actual cavity. Um, I don't want it pooling, just very slightly wet, so when I carry that to it, we've just got a little bit of tack to draw the material down on into the cavity in the position that I want it for it to. So we use that little bit of liquid that we had left over from the bidentine capsule. I just want to wet the surface with that. That's far too wet at the moment, so it's just getting that just right. Take a little bit of excess off with the brush. And then I just want to dry it slightly. Okay, then I'll just be checking the consistency of my biodenti and quite happy with that. A tiny, tiny little bit on the wet side. Let's see how we go. So that's about the size I want in here and then using that wetness it just starts to catch. And this is where it just, it's just no packing at all, you're just trying to tease it into position. So I'm conscious of the margins that I want to keep clear. We can easily trim it back a little bit afterwards with a probe but all the time I'm trying to think about the um, shaping of the dentine and just really trying to mimic that. In fact that's not far off what I want straight away but we can easily just take another little bit, roll it, making sure my fingers are really dry. I want any to bring any moisture in at all and then I'll just add that to that. I was saying about this mesolingual cusp, I want to just get that nicely deared to the inside of there so we just start to build in some resilience to that cusp. But we're just teasing that into position. It is slightly wet this mix, so we've got some distal slide to that. It's got a little bit of a run to it, whereas I'd like to see a little bit more shaping. Yeah, that's we've got a little bit of a distal run to that. So perhaps should have tried it a fraction. But we'll be able to just uh, change that slightly. If I touch that now at the back, would we'll certainly get it sort of flowing further back where I don't want it to. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to leave that setting now. Okay, so we've we're, we're just gone about 10 minutes with this biodentine. Normally I wouldn't, I'd still leave it alone probably until the full 15. But I wanted to just show you how I'd know when that's not quite ready. So I'd want to be, what I want to do if I want to clear any margins, that's worked quite nicely with us clearing, keeping those margins clear, but I will want to clear it. And I'll do it with my probe. And that's just a little bit too soft at the moment. So we use the timer as a guide, but it's, it can be quite variable as to how, I think just sort of the moisture content in the air and patient's mouths, um, can, it, it can vary. Okay, we'll have another check of this now, just see if we're pretty much ready to go. It's getting a little bit chalkier and that's flaking away quite nicely. I stopped having an excavator on my tray a long while ago, but since I've been back using Bidentine, we use, I use an excavator. So the tools that I use for carving and shaping, I try and get as much of the shaping when I'm placing it, but also then we just want to do so with the fine shaping. If I want to take anything off a Clusely, I'll tend to use the excavator and just take that surface 
just amend the surface. So what I'm trying to think of is just the thickness I want it on my filling material. So just creating enough depth for Cluesley. I'd want a really good millimetre clearance as much as I can across there. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with that shaping generally. We've got some nice natural retention in the shaping of this filling. One of the things you really need to be aware of with biodentine is that it doesn't bond to the turf. It takes really several months. There's my 15 minute timer. Um, it takes several months to really form those links with the dentine and then you can go back in. I've gone back into biodentine that I've done um, you know, perforation, um, lateral, when I've done lateral perforation repairs on roots and it's just like the dentine, it's fused with the natural dentine and go in a couple of months later. But initially you, have, you just haven't got the bond there. So this is quite a nice retentive cavity, but when you've got something that's fairly flattened, you've just got to be so careful with the way you're trimming the biodentine. And that's why I like to get as much shaping as I can. And then the, I just take the probe round to clean those margins. As I say, we've managed to keep it really clear all the way around there. That's nice and clear all around those margins and I'm happy we've got enough depth to place the filling. And we can be pretty much ready to go at this point. So one thing I didn't say, when if you've got real issues, we've got quite a nice dry field here, but if you've got issues with any moisture contamination, saliva, washing in from all angles, just when you first place it, trying to keep the just using the triple syringe and the air drying on it and just it tends to just give us a, a nice it tends to start drying at the surface then and contains also help contains if you've got too much flow to it okay just a little bit more suction Okay, so at this point, I just want to have a look down there, make sure we've got a nice clear enamel edge, nicely bonded, nice and clear. Any moisture, got a good contact. Okay, so the difference is with having biodentine in here that we've usually got a fairly narrow, shallow box um, and any class two restoration and the Whereas rather than it being quite open, so we really want to be sure that we've got the curing right down there. Because you've got that nice deep base now, I'm quite happy to put quite a bulk of composite in. Or Mesa, I should mm -hmm. say. But what I want to do is really make sure we've got very really adequate curing right down into that the base of this box okay so i've found since switching to the the ormesa it's it's a slightly different material to work with it's a lot the filling material itself is a lot firmer the flow doesn't have flow to it or nowhere near as much as uh, any of the flowables I was using previously. But you've got such a nice consistency with this that enables you to get in straight away and get some uh, good hold of the shape and good, good carving capability. You know, some of the, the fillings are, are, can be, this is a relatively shallow one at the margins, we can be taking them pretty much subgingival and can be quite hard to see exactly whether, you know, whether you've cleared all the biodentine away, but actually I don't mind if it's in there at the margins, 
will just etch to it and ideally I want it cleared and be bonding to enamel but if you write down there you haven't we've lost your enamel margin anyway um, so I'm happy if it's got you know the biodentine extends to that edge it's no problem okay. all right just bite up together on there I much prefer the slightly thicker articulating paper. I find we get much more um, accurate positioning of the uh, of anything that's high there. Just tap up and down again there for me. Just have a couple of little taps. And then when the teeth together, just try and slide from side to side. So free up your bottom jaw and let that, that set just rub over each other. That's great. And open. But yeah, the mirror is really lovely to shave and really lovely to, yeah, just taking it fully, obviously fully cured now. And really easy to remodel and polish up. got a few little blue marks on your teeth where we've been checking your bite but uh, other than that that should feel and look pretty nice for you one of the things with biodentine it's always difficult to judge just how you know you're trying to envisage that depth of dentine and then have sufficient layer and it can catch you out when you can have a really tight bite at the end but it's uh yeah i'm finding something like that would be just about ideal we've had when we took it much thinner than that we'd have little pockets wear through but you just run into that and top it up with any with your your white filling material okay let's just rinse that away